welcome back guys welcome to another video it is about kingdom protista and you know once we are looking towards uh, the five kingdom concept provided by uh, Whitaker uh, the kingdom protista is a weird kingdom it is in fact weird kingdom why it is weird because it is filled with different types of animals uh, I mean not animals actually different types of organisms in all around they have huge differences in their structure physiological purpose metabolism and all these things but still uh, actually the protista kingdom is produced to put all those mismatch kind of organisms so it's kind of hodgepodge in in at all right so in the kingdom protista uh, uh, what kind of organisms we find let's let's talk about them so one of them are chrysophytes Chrysophytes. Chrysophytes are the organisms that are usually found in uh, placed in the fresh water, you know, very much fresh water environments uh, like uh, diatoms, golden algae. So, the examples let me write diatoms. They are brilliant looking organisms, brilliant, and they are, are very much important nowadays because uh, some of them can produce all the huge vitamin rich contents. So we can take them for as a food, as a single cell protein uh, for our purpose. And uh, except for diatom, there are planktons. You know, planktons are pretty common. I think you probably heard the name before, plankton. Planktons can be two types. One is the zooplankton, other one is, uh, you know, uh, so majorly zooplankton is a kind of plankton that are uh, in an animal kind of nature. Another one is a phytoplankton. They are more like a plant-like nature because zooplankton won't produce their own food. On the other hand, phytoplankton have chlorophyll. They can produce their food. So this organism, they are usually found in organ, uh, you know, in water, water environments, in aquatic environments. They are not found in the uh, in 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 other environments. So these planktons and diatoms, they are brilliant, and and some of those uh, some of those diatoms, you know. They are placed uh, in, uh, they have left behind a large amount of cell wall uh, because diatoms have beautiful cell wall and they are deposited, deposited huge amount of cell wall in the bed of those freshwater environment, in the bed of those uh, huge uh, aquatic environments. And if you take those cell wall containing region, it is called diatomaceous, diatomaceous. earth earth because it contains you know soil of the freshwater environment or soil of the aquatic environment bed of any aquatic environment and we take those those are called diatomaceous earth or a kind of soil made with the cell wall of diatoms and then beauty uh, and uh, this soil is used in the polishing you know beautiful polish of you know very very good looking antiques and all these things or they are also taken as for the filtrations unit because we take them and we use it in the filtration manufacturing purpose or any water filters right so they are brilliant and very useful the second type uh, that uh, that can also be found you know you can see the diversity why i am calling it weird so because of this, this diversity second thing is here the dinoflagellates dino flagellates flagellates Dinoflagellates are there, right? And these organisms are mostly marine and they are also photosynthetic. That means they can have uh, their own food, they can produce their own food using the chlorophyll that is present there. So they produce their own food. That's a very good thing, self sufficient. And uh, they appear yellow, green, or brown, or blue, red, depending upon uh, what uh, I mean, what depth in ocean they are in. But uh, they are brilliant, you know, they have blue green algae, brown green algae, different type of algae and whatever things, many things you probably heard in your life, you know, those are the example of uh, dinoflagellates. They are beautiful looking things. If you want to know more about diatoms and dy dinoflagellates, it's a very aesthetic to watch those videos in YouTube. You can find, you know, marine videos about diatoms, dinoflagellates, watch them, you will fall in love with them. Okay. So, third things are euglenoids, you know, euglenoids, euglenoids, 
though they are not much difference between dinoflagellates flagellates and diatoms and all them but euglenoids are completely different right they are majority of the euglenoids are a freshwater organism right but they mostly found in the stagnant you know they mostly found in the stagnant stagnant water the water which is not moving and euglenoids are not good they can cause harm right and they have in, they don't have cell wall they lack a kind of typical cell wall but they have a protein rich layer and that layer is called pellicle right they have a layer called pellicle they don't have a typical you know cell wall in that sense right uh, though they are photosynthetic in the presence of sunlight but when deprived of some light, they behave like heterotrophs. So you can see how weird their behavior is, you know, how variety is there. So you cannot actually define the group protista because it, it contains uh, autotrophs, it contains heterotrophs and autotrophs. It contains, you know, someone who don't have a cell wall. It contains someone who don't, uh, who has a cell wall or has cell membrane functioning so they have different variety someone is red in color someone is brown in color someone is yellow in color so they are varied someone is very small someone is big euglenoids are bigger you can see them uh, using a microscope right Pre very easily you can see the uh, euglenoids uh, but uh, on the other hand diatoms are very small and also finally another weird thing that is slime mold slime molds Slime molds are something that uh, are saprophytic in nature. Now you say, we have autotrophs, we have heterotrophs, now we are having saprophytes. Now saprophyte means, what do you know what saprophyte means? Saprophyte means they are, you know, uh, parasitic in nature, right? Their body moves along the decaying twig. They kind of can move and leaves the engulfing organic material as they go on so they are very dangerous kind of thing i i they're kind of ugly thing you know they move towards decaying things dead things and taking the food and releasing all the organic engulfing material outside right and uh, and they also replicate via you know spore because inside them they produce spores the spore sac fuses with the membrane spores release outside and the spore can be thrown some some meter distance away and new slime mold start to go away right they are dispersed by air so dangerous it's a dangerous thing right and you know finally the huge part of the protista that is protozoa so let me write it is protozoa and protozoa is a huge group itself because protozoa contains many different variety of organisms they are also most of them are unicellular that's why they call protozoa some other things are called metazoa because multiple cells are there protozoa means single cell organisms and these organisms are you know parasitic most of them are parasitic in nature okay and most of them uh, cannot produce their food on their own right so they can attack animal cell or plant cell to derive nutrient sources from them kill that after they get it and there are many different varieties of protozoas too like amoeboid protozoas uh, flagellated amoeboid protozoas looks like amoeba amoeba is a type of protozoa as you, as you all know uh, looks something like this say amoeba right amoeba then uh, we have you know uh, because they have pseudopodia, that is the pseudopodia, with the pseudopodia they can move, they are amoeboid protozoans. We have flagellated protozoas, like, like small thing like this, have a huge flagella coming out, with which they can migrate, with which they can move, right? They have a ciliated protozoa, most of the ciliated protozoas found to be present in uh, the marine environment, because the cilia, again, looks like something like this throughout the body cilia comes out and it helps them to move and attack an organism they have sporozoans because they produce spores and using the spores they uh, replicate 
right, and migrate from one place to another place. So you know, this group, as you can see, how many versatility itself present in this group. You know, there are so many versatility even inside a protozoa, and this protozoa is a simple part of protista. Then we have slime molds, completely different. Then we have euglenoids, different di dinoflagellates, different, and also. Mm, uh, cryosophytes are also different. So, among all, so this is why I call this kingdom Protista as a weird kingdom. You know, mixture of everything you're going to get inside. So, that's it, guys. Thank you.